वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर अजमेर सिंह मलिक डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कुरुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी कुरुक्षेत्र आई एम हेयर टू डेलीवरेट ऑन एन इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यू रिलेटिंग टू द फाइनेंशियल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दैट इज सेंटर स्टेट फाइनेंशियल रिलेशंस इन इंडिया द मॉड्यूल विल बी कंपोस्ड ऑफ टू पार्ट्स और अदर वी से देयर विल बी अ ब्रीफ डिस्क्रिप्शन on the significance and evolution of central state relations in india and the second part we will deal on the constitutional provisions made there in uh, there in our constitution for this purpose basically uh, uh, we have a federal framework in the government of india although it is since the days of the government of india act 1935 but we have not accepted india as a federal state no doubt there are many characteristics which are federal in nature but there are other characteristics which are unitary in unitary in characteristic unitary in uh, in, in their nature uh the in real sense it is the constituent assembly which has not accepted the scheme which was provided there in the government of india act 1935 the constitute constituent assembly which framed the constitution that rejected the proposal to describe india as a federal state rather it designated india as a union of state and as per the as per article 1 of the constitution india is union of states the financial relations between the central government and the state government at the time these were the provincial government that starts in the year 1870 when lord mayo introduced the devolution scheme for some uh, for some uh, for some purpose the income tax was levied before well before the government of india act uh, 1919 was uh, was brought in and uh, as per that the proceeds of this tax this means the income tax that was shared between the central government and the provincial government the government of indian act 1919 although introduced to provide revenue heads matching to the respective resp responsibility of the central and provincial government but it failed to a rigid division between the central and provincial uh, provincial heads of revenue which means that by the act of 18 by the act of 1919 since we introduced diarchy and as a result of that the functions were divided between the central and the provincial government and there was income tax before 1919 act and the proceeds of the revenue collected from by this tax that was to be shared between the center and the provinces at that at that time so the meston award uh, on the basis of experience in the 1920s lead to conclude that the authority most suited for discharging a particular governmental function need not necessarily be the authority most suited to raise the financial resources re required to discharge the function the government of india act 1935 that recognized that certain taxes beside the income tax or we can say in addition to the uh, in addition to income tax also Uh, may also be collected by the central government and shared with the provincial government in other words we can say that the responsibilities were shared the responsibility of the states were shared between the central government and the provincial government and that's why before be, after 1919 and thereafter and even by 1935 act it has been made that the income tax or the proceeds of the income tax will be shared between the central and the provincial government and the 19, 1935 act made it made it uh, empowered the central government to levy other taxes and to share those and the proceeds of those taxes may be shared between the central and the state central and the provincial government to discharge their functions and that's why uh the provisions have been made there in the that the part 12 of the constitution that is that has made certain provisions relating to that uh, that uh, that is the finance property contracts and the shoots of the constitution has the provisions for the central state financial relation mainly from article 268 to 79 or in other words we can say that they in the part 12 of 12 
which is on the finance, property, contracts and shoots. That provides for the constitutional regulation, that provides for the uh, constitution, uh, that provides for the relations between the center and state or more appropriately we can say the union and states in our constitution and the articles are relating to this aspect are article 268 to 279. We will discuss those articles in somewhat, in, in somewhat elaborately manner. First of all, we take up before we take up all those things, we, we, we take up another article that is article 266. What article 266 provides, that provides for the consolidated fund of India and the consolidated fund of the state. Again, I am repeating this aspect, article 266 provide that there, there shall be a consolidated fund of India and there shall be a consolidated fund of state at the state level. It means all proceeds or the income of the states at, as well as of the union go, government that will be deposited in the consolidated fund of India and, uh, and the uh, consolidated fund of the state. Similarly, article 267 that provides for the contingency fund of India and naturally as, uh, as in the case of article 266, there, there is a contingency fund of state also and it is provided there in article 267. The article 268 which as I have already stated that provides for the central state relation and it is a very important article in, in determining the central state relations. Article 268 provides for the duties levied by the union but collected and appropriated by the states. I am repeating this aspect that duties levied by the union government but uh, but those are collected and appropriated by the states means the state is an uh, state is empowered to collect those and uh, the appropriate those uh, the appropriate the proceeds from those duties article 268a that is an amended uh, article 268 is uh, amended and that is article 268 that provides for the taxes on services Again, I am emphasizing because this is the most flexible tax or more, more, most flexible revenue, revenue uh, sources, source of revenue at the present time. It accounts for more than 10 percent of the total proceeds, uh, total gross revenue of the uh, country. That is article 268A provides for taxes on services which are levied by the government of India but collected and appropriated by the government of India and states in the, and the states in the manner prescribed in, as in clause 2 of this, uh, clause 2 of this article. It means uh, that the parliament, uh, the clause 2 of article 268 provides that uh, the law relating to this, 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 uh, uh, this tax that is provided in the art, uh, that is tax or uh, article 268 provides for the duties levied by the union but collected and appropriated by the states. It means that taxes are levied by the union government but those are collected by states and as well as appropriated by the states. The government of India or most, more appropriately the parliament has amended this article and inserted another article that is the article 268A. Article 268A provides for taxes on services levied by the government of India or the union government. These taxes are, these taxes are collected by the union government and appropriated by the states in the manner as prescribed there in the clause 2 of this article. What clause 2 provides for? The clause 2 provides for that for this kind of the taxes that, that is taxes on the services that will be how it will be appropriated, how it will be, uh, how, how this, may, this will be collected and appropriated that will be determined by the law, the law made by the parliament and therefore the predominance or the authority to allocate these articles uh, to these resources, uh, the resources uh, on the uh, uh, on the resources or the revenue collected uh, collected by the government of India or by the states, whatever it is, 
now at present it is by the government of india as the tax on the services that is that is an important one and that is to be distributed as per the sweet will of the government of india this if we say that there is a, there is more than 10% of the gross revenue of the government of india is being a, be, is uh, from this uh, this source of uh, tax that is the tax on the services similarly there is another article next article we can say article 269 that deals with the taxes levied and collected by the union but assigned to the states the proceeds will not be a part of the consolidated fund of india and assigned to the states within which the tax is levyable and distributed among those states in accordance with the par in accordance with such principle as formulated by parliament by uh, by law in other words or in a simple sense we can say these are the there are certain taxes which are levied and collected by the government of india in certain states not in all the states in certain states and the proceeds of these taxes which are uh, proceeds of these taxes that will not become a part of the consolidated fund of india the reason being these will be allocated to those states from where these are collected from where these are uh, collected by the government of india and it will be distributed as per the principle laid down by the parliament in this regard again we can say that just to have some sort of predominance on the financial resources that keeping in view certain uh, peculiar situations of certain states regarding certain activities the government of india or the parliament has made law so that as per article 269 those can be collected by the government of india and if they want to give certain relief uh, certain concessions to the concerned one in and it it can be allocated it can be allocated these are the operational certain operational aspect that's why this provision has been made by the uh, in the constitution so as to compensate or so as to smoothen the tax structure and the mechanism to collect the taxes and uh, to to allocate uh, the proceeds of those taxes to the states the next article is article 270 and that article 270 provides that all taxes and duties mentioned in the union list except those in article 268 268a 269 and surcharge on taxes and duties referred in article 271 we will discuss after this one that surcharge on taxes and duties uh, in article uh, and any kind of cess levied for specific purpose under any law made by parliament is collected by government of india and distributed between the union and states again i am repeating it article 270 provides that all taxes and duties in the union list and surcharge on taxes and duties and any cess levied for specific purpose that will be imposed by the by the government of india it will be collected by the government of india no doubt after enacting a law in this regard and it will be distributed between the union and states and no doubt on the basis of certain agreed or whatever is being uh, whatever is being accepted by the parliament then next article that's article 271 as i have referred earlier that is in the uh, that is in the union list it empowers the parliament to increase duties or taxes by a surcharge and the whole proceeds of it is credited to the consolidated fund of india you might be observed there is an education cess there is again savach bharat cess this kind of the cess which is imposed on income tax or on any other tax the cess or the, that is collected by the government of india then the proceeds of such taxes such cess that is distributed as per the agreed formula or as per the agreed norms between the union and states that that is there in article 271 now next article that is article 272 that is repealed by 18th constitutional amendment act and that's why it does not this article does not have any relevance to our uh, yeah, to determine the central state financial relations. Next aspect is Article 273. That 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 
that provides that grants in lieu of export duty on jute and jute products to be charged on the consolidated fund of India. I am repeating and re-emphasizing this fact that article 273 provides for the grants and that is in, in lieu of export duty on jute and jute products. These are the two important things and that will be charged from charged on consolidated fund of India and uh, that is that is on India as the revenue the charge char, those that is charged as the revenue by the states Assam, Bihar, Odisha, West Bengal each year means that uh, the government of India want to impose if want to impose any export duty the states although the state can impose it but states are not imposing rather it is the uh, article 273 provides that the government of India can impose it and if it likes so but in lieu of that the government of India uh, the government of India gives uh, government of India gives a grant to the states of Assam, Bihar, Odisha, and West Bengal each year in lieu of that export duty. Then Article 274 that ensures requirement of prior recommendation of president before a bill affecting taxation in which states uh, before. Uh, before a bill affecting taxation in which states are introduced interested introduced in any house of parliament for 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 enactment and i, uh, I tell you one thing that uh, uh, that uh, uh, there is a there are there are three list one is the union list another is state list and the another is concurrent list means the 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 the, the subjects which are in the union list means the parliament is empowered to impose the taxes in case of state list the parliament uh, the state legislature not parliament the state legislature is empowered to to impose taxes but there is no reference to the concurrent list means the they, uh, they, they, there is uh, uh, that uh, the concurrent functions are like that that we may not uh, require enough resources but there is an article uh, uh, that that is there is a uh, uh, we say and there is an entry which is called the 97th entry and 97th entry is a reservoir powers and it means if there is as as happened in the service tax uh, service tax that's uh, under the uh, under entry 97 in the union list the parliament has imposed a service tax uh, on certain services and as a, and that that is an important source of revenue to the government and that source of revenue uh, that provides in such a circumstances means there is a clear cut demarcations of 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 of, of such subjects where the state go, state legislature or the union parliament is empowered to impose the tax, tax uh, impose the taxes but an important thing article 275 uh, 274 has relevance in such a circumstances means if there is any bill in the parliament to be introduced uh, to be introduced and that is affecting the state uh, that is affecting the revenue of a particular state in that circumstances it is provided in this article uh, means to article 274 that the prior rec prior recommendation of the president has to be taken so before it is introduced or before it is enacted in the parliament reason being that uh, that it may affect the uh, affect the interest of that particular state which is to be affected by 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 that enactment of the parliament in in in, in context with the taxation then another important and you may be aware of this article that's article 275 that provides for the external grant grants in aid of revenue to each state uh, or you can say that article 275 provides to extend grants in aid of revenue to such state which in the opinion of the parliament are in need of it again i am emphasizing because there are uh, certain kinds of the grant but article 275 provides the grants for the purpose for which the state is in need of that and the quantum of that grant is determined by the parliament and it may be different for the different state and it is paid out of the consolidated fund of india 
and naturally this has been uh, this has remained a very controversial one particularly that the political party which is in the political parties which is in power in parliament the and they may uh, they they may uh, treat it the states of the different political party while extending that grant but over the years because of the recommendations of many commission and committees uh, we we are we are going or moving towards more rationalizing more rationalization in extending such grants also we will discuss this aspect while discussing the issues while discussing the issues in the central state relations what is uh, uh, the true picture of that not only this one the aid is also given to meet the cost of such schemes again i am emphasizing the the aid that is under article 275 the aid is given to meet the cost of such scheme meant for the development and for the purpose of promoting the welfare of the scheduled tribes or raising the level of administration for the scheduled, scheduled areas means where the scheduled uh, scheduled tribe population is there there are certain other articles also in the constitution which have relevance or which are related to the central state financial relation here i emphasize two article article 292 and article 293 and article 292 and 293 define the power of the union and states respectively article 292 that's of the union and article 293 that's of the uh, that's of states to borrow money to finance their activities this is again a very important and very uh, con uh, it has also been very controversial one that article 293 that provides particularly i am emphasizing because of this uh, controversy that article 293 provides that state can borrow only within the territory of india not outside it and that they cannot raise any loan without the permission of the union government if any part of the loan extended by the government of india remains outstanding i would like to elaborate a little bit here about the article 293 article 292 is relating to the union government a yeah, union government can borrow money from anywhere from anywhere internationally or nationally or from anywhere from the private or the public sector however in case of state state cannot borrow money they can borrow either uh, they can borrow money from the territory of india and 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 that is also with the permission of the union government or the central government and and there is a clause that if there is an, any amount any amount of loan out of the government of india outstanding against the state government then this permission is a mandatory one and almost all the state governments have taken loan from the union government in such a circumstances it has become a law or you can say it has become a control mechanism of the uh, central government on the state government uh, and they cannot borrow the money although there is another provision also that is they can they can raise their revenue uh, from the so, some uh, small saving schemes uh or the nssf national small saving fund uh, we can say earlier the limit was 100% now uh, it has been reduced to the 80% of the so that we will take up in another uh, in another discussion or in another module and that's uh, so in detailed manner the constitution again very important have a distinct power to levy taxes to the parliament by specific entries in union list and state legislature and appropriating the proceeds of taxes so levied by them as i already stated that if it is in union list then union parliament is empowered if it is in state list then the state is empowered residuary powers entry 97 we already discussed with the, with that and that's why uh, there is uh, 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 the, and uh, i have also stated that is uh, that is the in case of the concurrent subjects there is no provision or there is no concurrent taxes no concurrent uh, no concurrent uh, uh, revenue sources of revenue for the government of india as well as for the states uh, then uh, uh, we can say that what are the taxes in the union list this is very important to state here just i would like to there are three, uh, 13 taxes in the universe in the union list like the most important one income tax other than agriculture income because agriculture is in a state list and the 
parliament cannot cannot tax or parliament cannot make a law to to impose income tax on the agriculture income custom duties again it is unionist and the, so parliament is empowered to that excise duties except those on alcoholic liquor liquor for uh, human consumption corporation tax again it is in the union list a state duty in respect of pro property other than agriculture means any property which is other than agriculture on that the union uh, on that parliament can enact a law to impose the taxes terminal taxes on goods and passenger but carried by railway sea or air the passenger terminal tax on goods and passengers that is by railways by sea or by air it cannot be by roads because the by roads that's in the state list trade or commerce that's again relating to the uh, relating to the uh, union list taxes other than stamp duty on transaction in stocks exchanges and future markets any yani stamp duties on on purchase of assets other than these that is land etc that is not imposed by the parliament that can be imposed by the respective state legislature taxes on sale and purchase of goods other than newspaper when such when such sale takes place in course of interstate trade or commerce means that these kind of sale or purchase of goods can be imposed only if it is interstate means where the state is not in picture only then it can be imposed so these are the some of the taxes or imported taxes which are in the union list similarly there are certain taxes i would like to share with you that is which are those in the uh, state list normally these are we say there are 19 such taxes which are imposed by the different states all over the country what are these land revenue but it is abolished by majority of states it was considered one of the important source of revenue by the states but now the rate is so low and our haryana state was the first one to introduce uh, to abolish it first and then the another important tax on agriculture income so far no state government state legislature has enacted any law to impose income tax on agriculture taxes on land and building that's a that taxes are being impo are imposed by the state government taxes on mineral rights subject to the restriction imposed by parliament this is again a very controversial issue we will take up it another uh, lecture on this particular aspect excise duty on alcoholic liquor for human consumption that's also uh, alcoholic liquor for human consumption that is taxed by the state legislature if it is not alcoholic uh, products if it is not for human consumption then it is taxed by the parliament or by the union government taxes on sale and purchase of goods other than newspapers taxes on goods and passenger as i already stated carried by road on passengers and goods by uh, if it is carried on uh, carried by road then it is by 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 state legislature taxes on vehicles taxes on professions no state government has imposed uh, taxes on uh, professions because it makes the state government unpopular one taxes on luxuries including on entertainments taxes on entry of goods into local area that is in municipal areas municipality tax or something like that and most of the state government has abolished or try and that's why taxes on advertisements other than those published in newspapers and broadcast by radio and television if you see on the road side advertisement that is taxed by the state government and naturally some duties uh we say <coughs> uh in uh, uh, if we summarize this aspect after uh, understanding the constitutional provisions and who can who can uh, which level of government can impose tax and which cannot that we have divided into that taxation system or taxes in india are divided into certain categories or certain groups what are those groups first we take some duties are liable by union but they are to be collected and entirely appropriated by states after collection second some taxes are both levied and collected by the union but their proceeds are assigned to the union and to those states within which they have been collected or which within which they have been levied as we have discussed earlier certain taxes are levied and collected by the union list 
but the proceeds are distributed between the union and states. This is the third category and it is also important uh, the certain principles also that or certain uh, certain uh, norms also that it has been important in India as well as well, like other other countries also that uh, that subjects list, uh, uh, we say subject listed uh, the subject listed at the jurisdiction that has to be that has to be taken care by the concerned government or concerned level of the legislature or the parliament. Then there are certain asymmetries relating to the availability of funds or the revenues to the state government as well as uh, imbalance as I have stated predominantly it is the union government which is having most of the revenue, most of the uh, sources of revenue with it and it is sharing with the state government and state governments have the uh, have demanded that they must be allocated more and more funds as they have to discharge so many uh, so many welfare activities or so many activities which are considered the welfare of the society we will deliberate on the second part of uh, central state financial relations as we discussed in the earlier part of earlier lecture on central state financial relations we discussed about the evolution growth and constitutional provisions relating to the central state financial relations. In, in this part of deliberation, we will discuss on two more issues. One is the constitution that constitutions of the commiss commissions, which recommended certain reforms for improving the central state financial relations. And the second is the issues associated with the Center, associated with central state financial relations. In the first part, first of all, why, why certain commissions were constituted for, for studying the central state financial relations? It was as earlier stated in earlier lecture that, that uh, there is a gap between the needs or the requirement of the states as well as uh, the availability of the resources, financial resources with them. Whereas the central government, which is no doubt intentionally the constitutional framework have made it a strong one. They have enough or the surplus resources and the states which have to, which have to uh, make expenditures, which have to provide certain services to the people in certain basic areas that, ha that they, the states May, were not having or are not having rather adequate funds to deliver those services to the people as per the welfare philosophy of the state. That is why to have uh, to balance that as asymmetric, asymmetric expenditure of the state government and the central government certain commissions were constituted by the government of India and we will discuss uh, what uh, we say that what they recommended for make for bringing reforms in the central state financial relations let's first look at the uh, uh, let's we take up that how many commissions are constituted for this purpose in total there are four commissions which studied central state financial relation first that is the first administrative reform commission the second commission on central state relations popularly known as sarkaria commission the third National Commission to review the working of the Constitution and the fourth Commission on Central State Relations and popularly known as M.M. Punchi Commission. So first of all, let us take the first Administrative Reform Commission. The first Administrative Reform Commission stressed the need to balance the national level and state level needs, which means that whatever the responsibilities or the functions to be performed by the national government and the state governments that should be taken or that must be taken into consideration while allocating the resources, financial resources to the respective level of the government. The second is that is the two institutions particularly the finance commission and the planning commission no doubt now planning commission is a uh, planning commission has been as abolished and Niti Aayog has been established in place of planning commission but uh, we say that the planning commission have been there 
for a long period in Indian history and that's why uh, we have to study the both finance commission and the planning commission those are performing the responsibility of distribution and allocation of financial resources naturally uh, naturally the finance commission was uh, finance commission is constitutional body whereas planning commission has allocated the resources for the development of the country and therefore that the two institutions that how the, 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 those institutions are playing their role that has to be considered while 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 uh, allocating the resources that is an important issue associated with that then uh, we say the third important recommendations which was given by the first administrative reform commission is that is to set up a interstate council under article 263 i i I emphasize this aspect that there is a provision in the constitution under article 263 to, to have interstate, uh, interstate council and that is to resolve the conflict between central and states and among states. But that has been, uh, that has remained inactive or not constituted for, for, a, for, a, uh, uh, for most of the time in India and that is why the first administrative reform commission recommended that it should be constituted and it must be utilized for for resolving those conflict particularly if it is relating to the financial aspect uh, no doubt the other aspects also but finance is uh, as one of since the context is the finance that's why i'm emphasizing on the financial relationship then the second commission was that is the sarkaria commission the sarkaria commission made recommendations recommendations on certain areas which are the what are those areas number one it was on resource sharing number two it was on expenditure reforms number three it was on the finance commission and planning commission and their relationship and number uh, five that is the natural calamities and there are certain other matters also what are those the second commission constituted by the government of India to study the central state financial relation or in general central state relation was the Sarkaria Commission. The commission, the Sarkaria Commission made recommendation uh, in the following five areas. The first area was on resource sharing, the second was on expenditure reforms, the third is finance commission and planning commission, fourth is on natural calamities and fifth is other matters. We will take up one by one. The first aspect is that is uh, that is the resource sharing. But before we discussing before discussing the resource sharing, we would like to discuss that Sarkaria Commission was constituted in 1984, and that was to uh, to study the central state relations in general. It also studied the provisions made under Article 268 and 269, and therefore. Uh, the commission make, made certain recommendation in the areas I stated earlier that is in the five categories and relating to or in financial context, central state financial relations contest. First of import, first important thing is that is resource sharing. In case of uh, this aspect, uh, it made certain recommendations that is that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, it recommended that the central government should consult the state government to levy duty under article 268 and it should be on periodical basis because there are changes in the circumstances or the conditions and that's why that it should be the government of India must should consult the state government in this regard. The second important thing recommendation relating to this uh, resource sharing that commission recommended that it proposed rather it proposed that a national economic and development council should be established and the taxation on agriculture income should be considered although it has not been accepted or we say uh, that uh, that has not been accepted by the government there is another important thing is that uh, the commission recommended that is the resource sharing re, uh, should be revised uh, based on certain uh, criteria and uh, we say uh, the third recommendations on, on resource sharing which uh, Sarkaria Commission made that the sur surcharge which is to be levied on income or any, uh, any, other, uh, any other any income 
of the uh, of the state or the country or the uh, central government if we are imposing surcharge then it should be for specific purposes and it should be shared with the states this is an important uh, recommendation which was made not only this one that is the taxes under article 268 and 269 that should be that uh, that should be transferred or uh, we say that uh, the fourth recommendations in case of resource sharing is that is the revision of the upper limit on the uh, on the profession tax etc that should be there the second aspect was relating to the expenditure reforms and in case of expenditure reforms uh, it advised the state governments and the central government that the populist measures uh, particularly being taken by the state governments that should not be that should uh, there should be certain restrictions on those aspects nowadays you see particularly when the political parties are releasing the manifesto then they ha they, they 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 promise to launch the popular scheme and uh, you see that the sarkaria commission during 1980s it re recommended that if there is an expenditure which is not as per the sound financial management of sound financial management of the country that should be restricted and that's why the expenditure reforms may should be made in such a manner so that there may not be the vestige of the financial resources which is not surplus in our country the third important aspect on which recommendation were made as i already stated that is on finance commission and the planning commission although since the finance planning commission is no uh, nowhere and the finance commission has attained its original position and it started to it, it started to devolve the financial resources to the states and those are well accepted by the government and the 42 percent of the allocations from the divisible taxes or the income income tax between the between union central government and the state government that is an example of it that is we can say the finance commission has attained uh, its original or financial uh, finance commission has no competitor now in the form of the planning commission and that's why uh, we say but there were certain there, there were certain uh, recommendations made by the sarkaria commission in that regard and that's why i'm not repeating them it is history and if you want to uh, want to read about it then you refer to the text available uh, and uh, you will find all those things the fourth important areas where recommendations were made by the sarkaria commission that is in the case of uh, national na national calamities the fourth important areas where recommendations were made by sarkaria commission that that was in in case of natural calamities and in case of natural calamities there are three important recommendations the first is the relief must be given immediately there is no use to give relief after a calamity has passed away the second important thing that the state should have discretion to make intradistrict or intersectoral adjustment this is important means tied funds should not be allocated that this is for this purpose and this is for the that purpose state go government or the district administration even at the district administration level that must have uh, that must have reasonable powers so that it can reallocate it it can it can reallocate the financial resources for the purpose they need it most and the third thing is that relief assistance should extend the extend beyond the uh, financial years means sometimes the financial year uh, restrictions are imposed that should not be there this is in case of the natural calamities and you say uh, you can see by this that uh, sarkaria commission tried to make that how rationally we can utilize the financial grants or the financial assistance from the central government by the state government uh, by the state governments in case there is a natural calamities the fifth area of recommendation was other matters we take it and in that in that case uh, it recommended the important some of the important recommendation uh, that it is necessary to give, develop organizational capabilities and enterprise especially in those states where the flow of institutional finance is not so uh, not to the desired extent extent i'm repeating it it is necessary to develop organizational capabilities and enterprise 
enterprise in especially in those states where the flow of institutional finance is not to the desired extent there are certain states still now we doesn't have that kind of institutional finance although it is somewhat obso it seems to be somewhat obsolete but uh, many of the states are facing this kind at that time many of the states were facing and that's why this was considered as an important recommendation the another important recommendation was that there should be adequate flow of funds to the backward regions of the country or backward states of the country this is an important recommendation and third important recommendation was non productive expenditure should be considered as the part of the cap uh, should not be considered as the part of the capital budget so these are the some of the important recommendation of the sarkaria commission which uh, which were uh, which were uh, although we can say that the government of the government of india has taken into consideration while formulating or while devising the mechanism uh, to distribute the financial resources between the center and state the third commission which we normally or which we know as the national commission to review working on of the constitution it has also made certain recommendations what are those recommendations i am trying to uh, be brief in this aspect that there should be a specific enumeration of services that may become amenable to taxation by the states therefore constitution may be amended to enable state to levy and collect certain taxes now levied and collected by the union in order to augment their resources this is very important recommendation as we stated in earlier lecture on the central state financial relation that tax on services is levied by the parliament and it is collected by the government of india and it depends on the government of india how to share it with the states and since it is a flexible revenue therefore uh, therefore a flexible re flexible source of revenue for the government and it is it is it's the quantum of this revenue is more than 10% of the total the gross revenue of the country and therefore it suggested that there should be certain certain taxes which can be levied on the services on certain services and the uh, we say uh, the revenue from those taxes should be or must be shared by the states and so that it will help in strengthening the financial resources of the state or it will help to augment their resource financial resources of the state this is the first and a very important recommendation which uh, till date it has not been implemented by the government of india although that uh, more devolution has taken place because of the recommendation of the finance commission particularly 14th finance commission but this has not been accepted by the government of india till date then the second important recommendation of national commission to review working of the constitution was a statutory body called interstate trade and commerce commission under article 3 g 307 should be established by a law passed by the parliament to ensure removal of barriers to interstate trade and commerce in the country it is desired it should be there and naturally there are certain reforms and those are in that particular field the third recommendation was that the commission called for restructuring 11th and 12th schedule by amending article 243h and 243x which will allow the state legislature to make laws to develop power to devolve power to the panchayats and municipalities to create a separate financial domain for panchayat and municipalities in simple words the provisions have been made since 10th finance commission that certain financial resources will be devolved directly to the panchayats and municipality on the recommendation of the central finance commission this was provided there so that the function which are listed in the 11th schedule for panchayats 12th schedules for municipalities those may be performed and there is a financial sustainability of the panchayats and municipality in the country that is the third stratum of administration or the governance that may be strengthened and uh, that's for different purposes the fourth recommendation was it recommended to amend article 280 clause 3 bb and clause c 
to enable the Central Finance Commission to make recommendation after taking into consideration, uh, after taking into account the recommendation of the State Finance Commission. Although not in, in the spirit, but this has been accepted and the Central Finance Commission is making recommendations for devolving the financial resources to the panchayats and municipality based on the recommendations made by the made by the state respective state finance commission the commission also recommended that a proportionate amount uh, uh, a proportionate amount out of the total plan outlay be earmarked for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and be placed at the disposal of the proposed national scheduled caste and national national scheduled caste and scheduled tribe development authority and the state scheduled caste and scheduled tribes development authority respectively respectively uh, uh, this is again considered as per the provisions and we have inclusive uh, development is a da inclusive development policy may be keeping in view this kind of the recommendation the commission another important recommendation was that appropriate provision may be inserted in the constitution to empower the parliament to fix the upper limit of taxes on profession. Again, Article 269, uh, upper, not Article 269, but rather Article 276, uh, constitution to empower the parliament to fix the upper limit on taxes on profession, trade, callings and employment under Article 276 by enacting a law on the subject. Again, I am reminding you, under this provision of the constitution, there is a limit on, on imposing tax by the state government. There is a limit on imposing tax by the state government and that limit can be increased only by the parliament, not by the state legislature. And as a result of it, that this kind of the taxation process, that is taxes on profession, trade, callings and employment that has not been imposed by many of the state governments, rather this has been transferred to the local governments and local governments are Im imposing it. The restriction, restriction, why, why there is a demand for, uh, for, for, uh, we say, for enhancing the upper limit, the reason being the quantum or the amount of the taxes that can be levied as per this provision is so small that the state governments are reluctant to keep it with them and to impose such taxes on the people because the proceeds from such taxes are not enough to collect or to impose that it means that government makes them government become unpopular more and uh, and may not be able to get enough resources from such kind of the taxes another important thing is public policy another important recommendations of the uh, inter uh, national commission to review working of the constitution uh, was uh, rather is public policy should move decisively in the direction of doing away with surcharge as part of the union fiscal armory in a simple sense the surcharge should not be imposed but unfortunately or fortunately i can't decide it here or in this lecture because the surcharge is always being imposed and in case of such educational education says it has uh, it has, uh, we say, uh, that it, the collection is such a huge that we could make our elementary education program a successful one. Similarly, nowadays, uh, there is another kind of the sex and those sex have been helpful in bringing some sort of services, in, bring, in delivering certain services to the people and that is essentially required by the by by the society or by the country at large so these were the important recommendation on the of the national commission then the fourth commission which was appointed which was a recent recently appointed appointed that is mm punchi commission and this mm punchi commission was constituted to make a comprehensive review of all transfer so as to minimize the component of discretionary transfer particularly those channeled through centrally sponsored scheme is urgently required. The question is, there are a lot of centrally sponsored schemes and those are in the area of the state list. And as a result of that, most of the resources which are, which are retained, uh, which, which, are, uh, which are with the central government, those are being run, being funded by the central government, although that is considered as a state subject. 
as a result of that there was criticism of the central government and the central government is using discretionary power in in transferring that resources and that's why this was studied by the punchi commission second important area was it emphasized the need for higher central transfer to backward states you might have heard about the bimaru states and there are certain backward states in the country and uh, that create that is creating imbalance of the development and that's why uh, it is being felt that backward states must be empowered in such a way so that they can improve their physical and human infrastructure i'm not going in detail but this was one of the important areas which was considered or which was studied by uh, the punchi commission third the commission also considered that there should be a greater focus on the issue of governance in the last developed states generally it is considered the states which are not developed one which are not developed one they have the poor state of governance and that's why there should be a greater focus on the issue of governance in the last developed states because who are poor in governance they may not be able to they may not be able to deliver the development efforts or uh, efforts in that particular state for their people and that's why uh, uh, this commission considered that the central legislation both future and existing one like right to education involving state for their implementation should provide for sharing of cost by the central government swachh bharat is another one health mission is another one that there are certain basic services which are uh, we, well, uh, in in that case their governance is very poor the reason being those are poor and that's why this should be considered that is an important one then additional expenditure liabilities on states on account of their implementation of certain legislation should be fully borne by the central government and institutional mechanisms should be put in place to verify the additional cost and ensure reimbursement of such additional cost to the states means there are certain additional responsibilities as for example the central government parliament is enacting uh, environment related laws and who have to implement those environment related laws it is the state government and as a result of it it has to borne certain cost and who uh, the central government is not uh, not compensating those states to 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 deal with those environmental concerns and in such such kinds of the activities those were an important areas of the recommendation or consideration by the punchi commission the fifth is there is a need for suitable policy initiative to improve the cd ratio of bank created in the poorer state in a time bound manner this is i uh, will say it should also be accompanied with the strategy to cultivate and to spread the habit of banking among the poorer section of society to achieve the objective of financial inclusion and then i uh, will say jandan yojana you understand with that and uh the implication of the all those things this is after this is an after effect of the mm punchi commission the, that that's an important there is another recommendation or another suggestion which was made by this commission that issue of additional commitment of states arising on account of pay revision that requires to be taken up in such a way so as to make them a component of the terms of reference of the future finance commission we will discuss this matter while discussing the issues uh while discussing the issues uh of the uh, of uh, we say asymmetry or imbalance in the central state financial relations then there is another case which uh, for that the recommendation was made the royalty rates on major minerals should be revised i'll take up this uh, later on while discussing the things but uh, uh, we say uh there is another recommendation the ceiling on profession tax should be completely done away with by a constitutional uh, amendment the commission also felt that the scope for raising more revenue from the taxes mentioned in article 268 requires reexamination either by the next finance commission or by constitution by constituting an expert committee the commission recommend also recommended that an approach of state state specific target of fiscal deficit in fiscal reforms 
and budgetary man management legislation of state is required as the present is unable to deliver the right perspective. So, these are the some of the important recommendations which were made by the Punchi Commission. Punchi Commission not only made many recommendations for, uh, for rationalizing the central state financial relations, rather it has also pointed out that there are certain issues which needs to be addressed, which needs to be uh, taken in, uh, which needs to be studied and addressed in a proper manner. What are those issues? Some of the those important issues we will discuss in our lecture, in our deliberation here. The first is vertical imbalance sits in resource sharing. Number two is growing central expenditure on function in state list. Number three is regional imbalances. Number four is compliance and enforcement cost of central legislation. Number five is pay revision related issues and it has made certain recommendation we have already discussed and uh, uh, we referred earlier in the lecture. Number six is royalty related issues but on minerals and spectrum etc. Number seven is issue relating to service tax and profession tax. We already covered it. Taxes under Article 268 and 269, then fiscal legislations, market borrowings, small saving loans, direct transfer to local bodies and other implementing agencies, macroeconomic stabilization. So, we will take one by one. First, vertical imbalances in resource sharing. This is an important issue. The subjects are indirectly referred. The subjects like agriculture, education, skill development, health services, welfare of weaker sections. These are in the state list and state have not been endowed with matching financial resources for delivering it to the services. As a result of that, there is a feeling among the states, I am quoting, that the resource transfer to them have not been commensurate with the growing responsibilities. If we give an example that during year 2005 to 2008, the data is the share of state in the combined revenue received before transfer during 2005-2008 was 37.1 percent and the percentage share of center was 62.9 percent. And this percentage of share after transfer was 63.5 percent and 36.5 percent respectively for states and center. It indicates there is a wide vertical imbalance of resources. The relative share becomes just the reverse after transfer with the share of state going up to that of the center uh, coming down in simple words. That about 35 percent of the cost of the services delivered by the states is, is about 35 point, the revenue about 35 point, 35 percent to deliver the services available with the states, whereas it has to be dependent on the central government, whereas the central government has not to deliver it. It is only, only we say, uh, only taking the responsibility or giving only 35 percent of the services to be delivered, these services to be delivered. So, what should be with the states that is with the center and what should be with the center that is with the state in terms of expenditure, in terms of the cost and that is why there is a vertical imbalance and that is why it is important that in these services which are basic, which are considered, uh, which are considered very basic for the welfare state, that should be, that expenditure for that should be shared in the ratio of 50 to 50, means both of the state and central government may share it uh, in equal terms, although the devolution because of that 42 percent of the devolution from the income tax, no doubt it may be soothing on the states, but it, it, it is still not to be considered as sufficient one. The second important 
कंसर्न वर और इश्यू वॉज ग्रोइंग सेंट्रल एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन फंक्शन इन द स्टेट लिस्ट द मीन्स दैट the the twelfth finance commission report reveals that a fifth of the expenditure incurred by the center was on subject listed in the domain of the state means whatever subjects are listed in the state those for that the central government is discharging those function in the form of the central sponsored schemes why not you devolve finances to the So why not you devolve some finances or financial resources to the state government since these subjects are there in the state list and that's why it has to be considered very important uh, it has to be considered or uh, it has to be taken into consideration while devolving financial powers or the financial grants may be financial grants be given to the states the third important thing is that's the regional Im imbalances and in the regional uh, imbalances that there may be uh, normally there are certain areas which are backward there are certain areas which are not backward and uh, exemptions are being given by the most of the exemptions are given by the central government in the form of the tax exemption or the tax concession or in the form of uh, that is there may be specific programs for that particular area and that is by the central government all the development particularly if it is relating to agriculture and other things why not it is given to states they know which areas are developed which are not developed and instead of uh, that the central may help those areas we must have a mechanism to share that the regional imbalances may be corrected both by the central government efforts as well as state government efforts this is the fourth issue which we uh, we discuss we, we stated earlier uh that is compliance and enforcement cost of central legislation in this case as i stated you that there are certain laws relating to the environment that may be wildlife protection act for forest conservation act by diversity conservation act and uh, tribal conservation act and along with this uh, central legislation of environmental protection act this kind of enactment this is uh those are implemented by the state governments and there is no funding from the central government the central government must consider that the state must be funded as per their requirement in their respective states while devolving or while extending the grants there should be such mechanism institutional mechanism there is a need of institutional mechanism then fifth and the, that's the pay revision related as i stated earlier also after every 10 years there is a revision of pay of the government employees and the pay related issues that uh, uh, central government revise uh, the pay scales of its employees being in a model employer and since some of the states the state have to follow them state have to follow the central government if they are not following then they become unpopular but many times what happened state government does not have or many of the state government do not have uh, enough resources to pay at par with the states as a result of that there is uh, there, there 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 is a financial burden on the states and the amount to be uh, to be given at the time of the revision of pay scale is so so big that the state may find it difficult to do that this is an important aspect no doubt uh for 5 years the revision that is being funded in certain cases not all uh so uh we say that the central government must evolve a mechanism so that there may be a regular funding funding of deficit arising out of the pay revision by the central government and the state government there should be a parity and it should be followed this this is this is recommended by the punchi uh, punchi commission then another important thing is that's a royal related issues uh that is on mineral and spectrum and uh, we say there is a, what is this royal related issues uh we say royal related revision uh, revision of royalty rates on major minerals this is an important issues the central government is empowered by the mines and mineral development and regulation act 1957 to fix as well as to enhance the royalty in respects of 
uh, in respect of any mineral. Mineral is a state subject. But this act empowers the central government to impose or to revise the royalty. And it revises for itself. The central government can revise it on a yearly basis by every budgetary provision. It may be revising. But in case of the state, they are not revising for a longer period. Means what is to be given to the state by the central government in lieu of the duties or taxes on minerals uh, on min on minerals that is not being revised. Not there is a provision that it it will be revised for three years. Sarkaria Commission made recommendation that it will be revised after every two years. But Punchi Commission also made a recommendation at least it must be revised after three years as is promised in this legislation of 1957. This is that's why this is an important issue. Then taxes under article uh, 268 and 269 that's the cumulative effect. Taxes under article 268 and 269. There are many taxes which are imposed by the central government under article 268 and 269. The Punchi Commission of, 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 of Punchi Commission state that the opportunity or we say that scope for further imposing or further enhancing the rates of those taxes particularly under article 268 that has exhausted and therefore we must find out some alternative. Perhaps goods and service uh, taxes that may provide an opportunity for rationalizing this aspect. I am not going in detail because GST is yet to be uh, finalized in a proper manner. It may, uh, whenever it will come, then we will be able to know about those details, how it has been able to rationalize the taxation, uh, taxation under Article 268 and 269. There is another uh, issue which Punchi Commission has raised that's relating to the uh, that is fiscal reforms and budget management legislation. Almost all states except a few that may be West Bengal and Sikkim that all states have passed the fiscal reforms budgetary budget management legislation for their states and particularly relating to the deficit in relation to the deficit financing and that has to be taken into consideration because states are not able to compliance with the provisions made because of their pressing needs. And that's why uh, uh, this is an important issue which needs to be. Then market borrowings as we stated earlier also, we cannot borrow from the market. The states cannot borrow from the market and if they want to borrow from, from within, although they can borrow from within India and that is with the consent of the government. It should not be there. Both states and central government must be on equal footing or there may be relaxations for them. Similarly, small saving loans, that is national small saving funds are there. They can borrow. The states can uh, take advantages of those, but that era has already gone because of many kinds of the reform, tax reforms are there. And now the amount uh, collected or the central go the amount collected through the small saving funds is not considered so adequate for the for 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 funding the development or funding the government and that's why there is there are problems the director uh, uh, issues direct transfer to local bodies and other implementing agencies that is the central government is directly funding the district level authorities and other panchayats and municipalities that is also that is also subverting the predominance or the control of the state government in in terms of certain in certain of certain delivery of services to the to the people as a result of that that has created many kind of many kind of uh, uh, um, uh, many kinds of concerns for the state government and lastly macroeconomic responsibility that macroeconomic responsibility is considered to be the responsibility of uh, uh, of the of the uh, national government and it has to stable the economic system of the country as a whole these are the some of the issues which are to be attended by the central by the central government or by the concerned by the concerned so that we may have a balanced 
central state financial relation it should be in common in 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 consonance with the needs of the state as well as it should be uh, it should be in accordance with the paying capacity of the people in such a manner only then we can evolve a true kind of cooperative central state financial relations in the country thank you very much for being with us thanks again